Welcome to Dynamic Banter, the only show on the internet that's about big boys and big boy things. Like hitting things with sledgehammers. Yeah, that's right. On today on Dynamic Banter, we're going to tell you how to ride out safely so you don't choke on your vomit in the middle of the night. That's right, today we're going to be pumping iron. What does that mean? Whoa! I don't, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, I, I can't explain the, the feeling I have inside my body. You know what that is, brother? That's called the, the uh, matriarchy. And today what we're going to do is we're going to crush it. We're crushing, we're crushing the matriarchy tonight. tonight on Fox. Fox. Tonight on Fox, we're crushing the matriarchy. <laughs> what does it mean? What does any of it mean? I don't know, man, but this show has always been kind of weird. When, since when? <laughs> good, to, good to see you, Mike. How you doing, buddy? I'm fine. This has been kind of like an interesting week because we've been busy boys. We're, we promised a lot of you folks uh, from the very beginning that uh, when we uh, put this Patreon together, this dynamic banter Patreon together... <laughs> We decided <laughs> that we were going to put the pedal to the metal in 2024. Vroom, vroom, in the matriarchy. <laughs> it's not really the music <laughs> that you would associate with putting the pedal to the metal. Definitely not. That's tight. Anyway, guys, so Mike and I and Kevin have been working yeah. diligently on cool things for you. And yesterday we did a thing uh, that is uh, was pretty fun and could be a bonkers a bonkers thing. Dude, just leave it there. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why did I get so excited for a second? <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, are we? Do people? Does it matter? People don't. Are we on? Know that we're like nine years in the past. It's just a week <laughs> difference. I just don't know because an episode is going up tomorrow that I don't remember recording even a little bit. <laughs> and that worries us. I just can't remember what we talked about on the last show even a little. What have we said? Well, does it, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I, I feel like... Somebody tell us what we've said. I feel like if the history roads have people saying like, in this in this episode, you guys said this... That could spark an interesting discussion, probably, because we I don't remember what the fuck we said. We recorded last Tell week. Tell us about things that we've said in the past. This is the new segment on the show. Actually, yeah. Someone be our new, this is what you said in the last episode. <laughs> we need a dynamic banter stenographer. Yeah. I want to know what An buttons. archivist. <laughs> dude i was telling somebody about this show the other day and they were like what's the show about and i was like we just kind of talked to each other and she was like oh you just have that kind of show <laughs> see that's the thing that's why it's so hard to describe this fucking show because you don't want to say it's me talking to my best friend yeah we're having a good time because it seems like more than that, that but it's not but it's not a unique thing where it's like me and my pal sit down and we shoot the shit. It's not a unique thing in terms of like the actual structure of right, it. Right, right. But I think it's what we talk about that makes it even somewhat unique. Yeah. It's very us. Well, that's the part I have a problem like explaining. It's almost like dynamic banter is the explanation of it rather than the title. Yeah. And also the title. It just, but then that's the, th but remember we keep hitting that wall of like, you just have to listen to it. Well, it's like, well, I think it's, it's fair to say, I think that's what I'm settling on out of laziness yeah. is somebody asks you what it's about. You say the name of the podcast again, 
And then if they're still out, if they're not interested by that, they yeah. probably won't like Dynamic it. Dynamic anyway. banter. And then they're like, what, you guys talk to each other? And you say, well, I mean, yeah. give it a shot if you want. And they're like, let me guess, yours is different? <laughs> uh, and then you turn on theirs and they're talking about cum and piss. Exactly. <laughs> oh, shit. We fucking blew it. Damn. Uh, but anyway, uh, we we appreciate the page. I just want to say at the top of the show, I pr- appreciate the patrons. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy the content that's coming down the pipeline. There's some fun shit for the boys and girls. I also feel like one of the differentiating factors, and turn that up a little bit, <laughs> is all the fun stuff that we've built throughout the years <laughs> with the people, with the audience, yeah. feel like the thing that makes it more unique than like two oh, people just sure. talking to each other. For sure. So it's like we really built a fun thing together and we're making <clears throat> even more fun stuff, oh. even more in-depth stuff on the Patreon. You guys can quote me on this. This is a special show. Hold on. If you're going to say something important. I got to say it into a microphone. Please say it into a microphone. Please say it into, into one of these microphones. Would you mind? I don't mind at all. Guys, this show's something, something special. special. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you another thing. No one's going to tell us what our show is, because only we will know. Well, listen to our, listen to our show. That should be... You remember when we were talking about, like, HeadGum having us record an ad for our show? <laughs> yeah. That's what it be should it. be. Hey, guys. You like uh, when people talk to each other? And it's kind of weird? Hello, who's there? It's my doctor. He says you need to up your meds. Guys, come listen to the world's most calm podcast. We talk about piss. <laughs> we talk about piss. That's the, that's that's the, the tagline. <laughs> we we're talking. We're gonna be talking about pit. I've got some fun news today. We also, show a history road of a guy trying to explain. Oh, I oh love really? It. Great. I love, I love it. I love Thank synergy. You. Thank you in the future and right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, Mike, I have some really fun news that just came out about the Beatles. And I don't know, man. We're just rolling out. Don't tell me they broke up. I can't take it today. No, no, not yet. I think they're still holding strong after all this time. Uh <laughs> This is a the inside and the outside don't get along. <laughs> There's a constant, <laughs> constant, constant battle. battle. I'm warning you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my life, I've been searching for something, something. <laughs> Dude, so uh, uh, dude, that's like a computer. That's like Siri reading um, tablature. I'm breathing. It's saying the note. The note. Yeah. Three, 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 three. Uh, so um, some crazy news. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know <laughs> that Paul McCartney had? This base that he lost the Hoffner for base? like yeah for like forty years. Or Somebody something. stole it or something. The original like base, the original Hoffner base that was like one of one. I think Whoa. it was like a, a uniquely made like made by Jimmy Hoffner. M- made by Jimmy Hoffner, and uh, it was like a rock relic. Yeah, a rock and roll relic, and it was like relic. stolen. Yeah. And here we are, like, 40 years later or something, 50 years, and he was reunited with it. Whoa. He got his bass back, dude. This is like the shit of legend. Do you think he cried? Is there footage of it? I would love that if there was. He's just like, give me the fucking thing. (laughs) Mine. Pulls. Yoink. (laughs) Hey, look over there. Give me that. It's all you. (laughs) No, it's mine, isn't it? (laughs) He He goes like... But it belongs. Mine. Door shut. And he shoots someone. <laughs> Mine. Give me it back. Uh, so the Hofner, uh, the Hofner violin bass. 
sometimes nicknamed the Beatles Bay, the Beetle Bay, or the Cavern Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they name the Beetle Bay. <laughs> so they started making them because Paul McCartney liked it. <laughs> and Paul McCartney liked it looking at it in 1961. <laughs> Imagine the show where you're like, We work for Stan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's give this guy a shot on NPR. He was even he... nervous as fuck. <laughs> okay. Just read the telephone. Oh, camera. shit. Did you know that Ed Paul McCartney had it and he liked it and he saw it in 1961? He liked looking at it. So it's here. And, uh, huh. No, <laughs> skip that. Um, oh. You know we're live? We're live. It's tape. Um, Steve, just read the telephone. Apparently, this guy Stuart Sutcliffe no, was in the enough. Beatles, and he briefly lent McCartney Did the bass. Did anyone tell Steve about the story before he started filming? Hey, the symmetrical shape means it's playing. Uh, he likes to play it. Okay, go commercial. <laughs> <laughs> this is a <laughs> the symmetrical shape means that he likes to play. He likes to play it. <laughs> Um, so, okay. I wish I had, like, a fucking story about how he lost the goddamn thing. It's uh, I saw something that said stolen bass. Uh, this article from guitar.com. <laughs> <laughs> written for guitars and by guitars. Yeah. Um, it says, the woman who reunited Paul McCartney with a stolen bass guitar after more than 50 years is hoping she'll receive a reward. Mm. From the Beatles stars team. The instrument, a 1961 Hofner 500 one. <laughs> Are we on the air? It says here he liked it in 1961. East Sussex <laughs> resident Kathy Guest found the base in her attic. <laughs> After the death of her husband, who Aiden. stole it? Yeah, like we're we we need to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, dude, he, he's on his deathbed, and he's like, no matter what, you never get that fucking face. That that's yours. You if you, you love me, that face. And she's like, okay. You put it in my hands like I'm playing it forever. She's like, we have um twenty thousand dollars in the bank. You can please put please bury me with the base. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, Please so, bury me with the bass. Please. It says that after the death of her husband, it was it was found in her attic after the death of her husband, who apparently inherited it from his own brother. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> they just talk to each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah I bet you just talk to each other but it's different <laughs> I bet it's different isn't it oh, I don't know I think it is I don't know if I it think is. it is I don't know if it is I don't know man. maybe they're all like this I don't think it's possible to write this <laughs> so that makes me think something's different about it <laughs> um, uh, speaking with the son guest revealed that she'd slipped a letter into the guitar case before returning it to McCartney detailing her financial situation as a single mother with two schooling children okay okay uh -huh. <sighs> what are you thinking about what thoughts are you in I'm between thinking this family has been sitting on that gold mine for quite a while and they knew they had it yeah and they knew who got it. And the guy's like, if you turn us in, we're absolutely And that's fucked. the thing. They probably were probably were just like, this thing's worth so much fucking money. And yeah. then the other guy's probably like, but we'll go to fucking jail or we'll be fine yeah. or whatever. Here's the thing, man. When you steal a thing or you accept a stolen thing, you got to be willing to go through with it because it's like, why go through all the trials and tribulations yeah, of stealing the thing. If you're yeah. not going to try to 
uh, capitalize on. Are you going to have your own little for you rock and roll hall of fame? That guy just rubbed his dick on it every day for 50 yeah. years. Is that just like in your room? You got a rock and roll hall of fame guitar. Cool, yeah. bro. Yeah. No, sell it on the dark web. That's the thing. He, he probably didn't think if, if that guy was smart or maybe fuck, maybe this is what happened. Cause we may never know. And I am really looking forward to Pixar. <laughs> Super stuff. <laughs> Where the bass is like a thing with eyes. Yeah, and dude, it's like his, his whole adventure. I can't wait to see it. Whoa, because... you're not my dad. <laughs> Get your hands off me. With the bass voiced by Paul McCartney. Wait a minute. Hold Dad's on. coming back. I'm just a little boy. <laughs> the symmetry boy. means he looks crazy. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. But anyway, like we won't know if... Because I'm thinking the smartest thing you do if you steal Paul McCartney's bass... Is you fucking sell it right away yeah. to yeah. some schlep. Yeah. And then it's their problem. And then it's their problem and you got the money right Cash. away. Cash. So maybe. Drop it off at the bridge. Maybe. Huh? Huh? Kevin, I know I you're thinking, thinking this. this. I am. Maybe. Well, then say it. <laughs> <laughs> say what you're thinking. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe it has already exchanged many hands. Do 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 do. This is the base going to different houses. <laughs> Picture a map. There's and a little base is popping. Montage up. and the base is like, <laughs> and it's like it's it's totally this. The base has like a backpack on, and all these places yeah. are like fading yeah, Vegas. Past XXX live girls. <laughs> He's covering his eyes. <laughs> um, and then uh, there's got to be a scene where he's picked up by like someone, some famous bass player, like Flea or something. Like uh, Thundercat. Yeah, yeah. And goes, Thundercat's like, there, there's no way this is it. You screwed up. And then he's like, ooh, I think I'd rather like this. He wasn't used to being played like that. I like when you fucking touch me, Thundercat. And then he meets a stand up bass. Yeah. And she's a, a diversity hire. <laughs> 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 and what do they say and what does their uh, voice sound like and it's really fun it's like <laughs> tiffany haddish or something yeah everyone loves tiffany haddish it's most of the merchandise afterwards is it the stand-up bass and aquafina plays a bass pedal <laughs> it's really nice it's fun it's a fun scene guys i hope they don't cut it but it does say that, so I'm thinking maybe this family that gave it to Paul, uh, maybe it was like, maybe have had it for a while, but they weren't the original people who took it, maybe. Maybe it's like this guy's brother bought it. There's no way to know. And then was like, I gotta sell this. And then people are like, no way, man. Yeah, someone knows. So I want to know they, how like, different from the first person who actually uh, snatched it i know i want to know everything but we'll never know 50 years ago was what 1932 <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right let's ask the mayor is he around yeah <laughs> Mayor, we haven't talked to you in a minute. I'm kind of bumming out to tell you the absolute truth of it. Are you busy? No, it's not. Give me one second. I'm actually bumming out. If you want to be completely honest with me, I lost my prized possession. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hey, what was 50 years ago? What year was it? It was 50 years ago today, Thomas Jefferson turned a band to play. And then All right, All right Mayor, we gotta go. <laughs> he sounds good. He sounds busy as hell. 
When doesn't he? He always sounds so busy. So anyway, uh, it says this person says that, um, man, I really feel like her giving the note, the guitar back with a note in it is her like going like, look, maybe there's a chance this guy will give us like 10 grand. Yeah. Life changing money. Ch- give us some life changing money. Give I'll us take 50 care of two grand. boys. Yeah. You know, two fatherless boys. Uh, and honestly, like if I was Paul McCartney and I was like, all right, someone stole my fucking base. Like, Paul comes on the news ago. and he's like, I don't negotiate with Terry. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Yeah. And the base just never gets reunited with Paul. No. But uh, it's like, what's the right thing to do? Yeah. It just feels like if I was hit, if I was Paul and I lost that base like 50 years ago, I'd be like, oh, cool. Fuck yeah. My base. I played a lot of cool songs with that. Yeah. And by the way. I think he played like really like legendary songs, recorded them using that bass. Yeah. Uh huh. So it is like a legendary bass for Shizzle. Yeah. No, I mean, think so, of another, think of instruments associated with specific musicians. You have like that. the Eddie Van Halen guitar mm-hmm. and Paul McCartney bass. Mm-hmm. I and, think there's um, a Kurt Cobain like shredded up yeah it's like a he used to play it like a jaguar yeah and it's all like destroyed and yeah. he just like kept playing it in joe there. strummer guitar mm. there's yeah. probably a prince one in there but let's say like the top like the the um what's what's it called washington monument yeah or what's the monument the president's yeah. Oh, what the, am I the, thinking of? the the uh, mount rushmore mount rushmore of Stupid. like <laughs> the mount rushmore of like uh, rock instruments yeah. like that's up there. Oh, for, for sure. sure, for yeah. sure. Especially if you're completing like a band. Like, what are the what? What do you think is like the the top instruments that would make up like a like a regular band, like a lead guitar? But it belongs to someone specific. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's almost like you're assembling like a perfect band. So it would be like it's like Eric Kings. Clapton's guitar, Eric Clapton's Strat. Yeah, and then. Uh, what bass? It, I think we'll do Hoster. Paul McCartney yeah, bass just because we're talking about yeah. it. We'll do. Um, I literally just had another one in my head. Like uh, maybe Freddie's microphone. Sure, Freddie's microphone. We need a rhythm guitar, like uh, yeah. Ray Charles electric Ooh, piano, like yeah. Rhodes piano. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guilford Boyd's violin from Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. John Popper's harmonica. The guy from Yellow Cards <laughs> violin. This is a big band. <laughs> yeah, we need a lot of instruments. This they don't a... all tour. Yeah. Tito Puente in the, the horn section. The horn section from No Doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tito <Yeah>. Puente. <laughs> Flea's, Flea's bass is a little smaller next to... Paul's bass. He's the he's the second the rhythm bass. Yeah, he's rhythm bass and Paul's lead bass. <laughs> Who's drum set? I thought Keith Moon Keith would Keith be Moon drum the set. drums, but I didn't know it looked like him. there's some real good drummers out there. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Double bass. That's guy. Animal. Animal is based off of Keith yeah. Moon. Keith Moon. Keith Moon. <laughs> So I'm anyway, a, I'm a Scorpio with a Keith's moon. Ooh, I'm scared of Scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I stay away from desert areas. Uh, and so I'm thinking like, you know, this person is like, maybe I can get a little scratch out of McCartney if we do this the right way. And like, he can. What would you do if you were Paul? That's what I'm saying. I would be like, well, it's really cool. This bass is back. And I really want it back. So thank you. And I'd be like, I have so much fucking money. Yeah. This woman's life would be changed. She gave me my fucking base back. But it's like you don't want to give her the money and promote. Uh, yeah. You could like now you could steal anything from Paul McCartney and then he'll bail you out by buying his own shit back. It kind of just comes down to the story, right? And whether it's good enough and whether he buys it. Yeah. Because I would she could give be, her if I was Paul. Sir Paul, sorry. I Maybe would Neil. give her. <laughs> Maybe Neil, I don't know. I'm not getting back up. <laughs> uh, I would give her money, but like not a ton yeah. and not have it come from anything associated with yeah. whatever. I would give her like a. It'd be one of your like 
parent companies, one of your little companies that you run somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be like $25,000. Yeah, and it would be so far removed from like... Yeah, it doesn't even have your name on it. Yeah, yeah. And you're not allowed to do anything to your car or your house. (laughs) Because then people will see it. You gotta get my name out of your mouth. (laughs) I'll give you 25 (laughs) grand to keep my fucking name out of your (laughs) mouth. That's what he says. That's what he says. Uh, Okay, so it says here, my husband inherited it when another family member died and he'd had it for years. Okay, so they're throwing, like, dead relatives under the bus. Yeah. Like, maybe it's like, let's disconnect ourselves to the point where it's, like, dead relative on top of dead relative. Listen, someone took it. I heard someone took it. It's just in our attic. Sorry. Listen, it's just people in our family died. They're gone. They can't be blamed. Yeah. Sorry, Paul. Here's your base. It was, I don't know who took it. Right. It was in our attic. But if you want to give me $25,000, I'll take That's it. That's what I'm saying. It's, you know, we're having a hard time here. It's just that my husband's dead and my kids are very nice. I would have said in the letter. And, and they, they love the Rolling Stones. In the, <laughs> they love them. <clears throat> my kid loves that song, Imagine. <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> that's it and then like you know if i was that person i'd be like p.s we could hang on to it <laughs> we could have hung on to it <laughs> you know a lot of people asked us people said we could have sold it like you know a lot of people could ask us. So anyways, this is my husband inherited after fucking eight family members died and then she said he had no idea where it came from <laughs> Even though she saw you holding it, standing there. Even though it was the only instrument in the house. And it was in a box that said, do not touch Paul McCartney's stolen bass. (laughs) The bass was stolen. Don't know who (laughs) had it. He was a keen musician and used to play all the guitars at home, including Paul's bass. So he was just like playing it. Just like sitting on the couch watching like Married with Children. That would upset me, I think. (laughs) That would upset me. We both loved music and I still go to gigs every weekend. I spoke to the security there and that's how it all got started. His people sent me pictures of the instrument they were looking for and I sent pictures back of the one I had. They confirmed it was the actual base they were looking for. After but there that, was shit all over it. There was they crumbs. Sent someone round to pick it up, dude. That's the thing. Like crumbs. Somebody Cheetos, else's like jerk off hand dust is dings on it. Dings on it on the fucking headstock. Yeah, dude. I would have been like, God damn it, keep it in the case. Yeah, dude. If I was Paul, don't, like, don't want sh- it. Honestly, I'd be like. He could probably send it to Hoffner and they could like restore it. Yeah, but it's like, what do you? I'm trying to put myself in his position. What yeah. do you even want? Yeah. You, you know, guys you guys were like playing with it. Just keep it. You know, you emotionally <laughs> attached from, you emotionally detached from it a long yeah. time ago. You're just like fucking playing smoke on the water. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the, fir- the the intro to Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> Oh shit! Um, she added that McCartney's team had promised a reward. Okay. For the instrument's safe return, saying, "Quote: I've still got the offer open with them, and I've taken advice." What does that mean? You got a lawyer? And they just started talking to you. It's part of rock and roll history, and it's not like they're a small band. Okay. They're you like, have a stolen thing. Yeah. That you happened upon. Yeah. Like, pure luck. Your husband's playing fucking <laughs> water, or what is it, Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> 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 He's played it wrong, too. <laughs> He's missing a lot Your of Your husband notes. didn't know how to tune it. Those strings suck. Yeah, the strings are gross. Paul's like, I wouldn't. Damn, I was I had to stop myself. <laughs> Dude, I kind of get it. Yeah, I, I kind of get. It. I feel I like st- a couple were sent telepathically. It is. I wouldn't play that thing with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would whip me first born with them strings. <laughs> Oh, 
I wouldn't play those strings with John's hands. I'm taking the money back because the strings fucking suck. <laughs> what is this guitar center? You didn't clean out the parts. Dude, you didn't clean out. How did you not clean it out? There's fingernail dust under him. Hoffner will restore it. It's okay. I, I guess I cons- didn't consider that Hoffner will definitely restore it. And it's like, what? Well, well, sure. Maybe it's not the, the dings. Some of those dings maybe are from Paul, you know? You want those dings, and then one day when it's in like a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame kind of display, you're like, "That was Gary's ding." That's is that Gary's <laughs> ding or is that Paul's <laughs> ding? We don't know. Did he ding that, putting it away at Shea Stadium in 1962, or did he ding that in the video room <laughs> next to the Sega it, Genesis? Did he ding it in the kitchen because he was reaching for <laughs> chips and he was wearing it around the house? <laughs> He's naked and he's wearing, wearing his butt of his ba- Hey, I'm wearing the bass. I'm wearing the bass. I'm a Beatle. I'm the Beatles. <laughs> hey, honey, watch this. Beat my Beatles. Look at this. Licky B. I'm, I'm bouncing it on my dick. I'm John McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke on the wall. <laughs> I'm John McCartney. The Hofner bass was the first McCartney ever owned. Okay, so that's what it is. It was the first bass he ever owned. Uh-huh. And he hastily purchased it for 30 pounds in Hamburg in 1961. 40? Uh, bu- 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 what? Only 40 30. Pounds? 30. 30? Yeah. Which is even less than 40. Ah! The instrument was then stolen off the back of a van in 1972 and later sold to a pub landlord for a few pints. Mm. So this thing's been around. I want to see that Pixar movie now. So the first guy was smart. He immediately, he grabbed it and then he immediately offloaded it because yeah. he had an alcoholism. <laughs> and then he got a couple pints out of it. <laughs> and then it was in like that pub keg room for like three yeah, years. Like next to a keg, like kind of just sandwiched between two kegs. Yeah. And this is still the 70s when all this is happening. Yeah. Um, and then it says, per the Lost Base Project, there was something called the Lost Base Project. <laughs> and when you go to the Lost Base Project.com right now, as in big red letters, found. Found Base Project. The Lost Base found. Missing for 51 years. We are thrilled to tell you that Paul McCartney's first Hofner base has been found and reunited with Paul. We want to thank everyone at the Finding Paul's Lost Base Foundation. (laughs) Dude, and all of this, like that foundation exists. This family has all this inner turmoil and he opens the door and he grabs the vase and and he just takes the fuck off. Mine. There's no press conference. There's nothing. Nothing to see here. Bye-bye. Get off the property. Releasing the dogs. We've got to clean out Greg's crumbs. (laughs) And it does say that uh, it, it, it was still in its original case. The repairs are needed before it can be played. A statement of McCartney's website also notes that the instrument, quote, has been authenticated by Hitler. Sorry, Hoffman. <laughs> Hitler built that base with his bare hands. <laughs> well, my eyes do see. <laughs> Someone, the you, this, they will play Hertha Schelter. And so it is has been authenticated by Hoffner, and that the musician is quote incredibly grateful. To all those involved. Tell them I'm incredibly grateful. We'll be right back. (laughs) What is this show? Tell them I'm grateful. I'm playing cricket. Yeah, get out of my face. So there it is. So he's he's got his bass back after 50 years. Good. Pretty good. Crazy, huh? Thank God. And Paul. one more small piece of Beatles news while we're still on it. Uh, Sam Mendes. Do you guys know this director? Did you hear about this? Hear it is. We just talked about Sam Mendes in some way. Hold on. Let's see. Let's get Sam Mendes's. <laughs> uh, 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 Did you hear it this? Uh, Road to Perdition, Revolutionary Road, Skyfall, 1917. 
Kevin, would you please get me a water? Yeah. From the from the the water thing. Whoa, he's doing four. So that's the thing. He's doing. He did Jarhead and American Beauty and all these like big movies. And then he's doing four different documentaries yeah. on the Beatles. No, four different movies like biopics. Biopics means that somebody else plays. Them, yeah, right? Jared and, Leto. And it's all. It's four separate Beatles movies on Paul, John, George, and Ringo. And uh, they'll all be like different kind of movies from different perspectives of the different Beatles. But you can play them at the same time, and, and they all them. line up. God, <laughs> that'd be so stupid and funny. I would be. I would eat that. Yeah, up. same. I would buy a lot of stuff associated with Dude, that. I would be. Which all makes me on think board. that's what's gonna happen. I bet you anything that there will be something. Where like they ma- a part in the movie matches up, like right, they all right, walk right, right. on stage <laughs> yeah, at Shea Stadium the, together. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that'd be great. They should do that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it'll be from each Beatles member's point of view, and then they'll intersect to tell the astonishing story of the greatest band in history, leading that. up to their 1970 breakup. And it says Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, and the families of the late John Lennon and George Harrison have granted. Thank you. Full life story and music rights for the scripted films. Holy shit, that's huge. Yeah. So they're going to get, they've got permission from everybody. Wait, so the four, they're doing one for each? It's Beatles? four different movies, yeah, that are all different. And from the perspectives of different Beatles. Dude, so the woman. Fucking cool, right? I hope so. Sounds cool. The woman who stole the bass is like, I know, you just sold your movie, right? It's got a little bit of couch cushions, ain't ya? Got a little bit of dunkets, wasn't it? Oh, I suppose you could dig around underneath the cupboard and find a couple of shillings, eh? It's a nice space. I was thinking maybe I'd teach myself how to play. Oh, I look like I got me bird's nest knocked out. I you show me a couple of shillings. We'll call it a day, won't we, Paul McCartney? I've got me kids vomit all over my hands. I could teach myself a few tunes, I'm sure. I'm going to die alone and in pain. And it's going to be your fault, Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, man. So yeah, Sam Mendes doing th- four Beatles movies, and I was like, you know, I was talking to Owen a little bit about this yesterday, and he was like, I'm so sick of these fucking biopics that are all the same. They follow the same fucking formula, like the rise and fall of these bands and these like musicians, these artists, and it all follows the same like fucking format, like. And then there's the moment where things are looking ho- real bad, and then there's the like, ooh, but the legacy, li-, you know, all the biopic tropes. And I was like, okay, so maybe one of them is like that. But then there's three other ones. The Ringo one is like that. Right? But I was thinking, dude, the Ringo one would be like that. He's in it. In a he funny stars way. him. <laughs> he plays young Ringo. <laughs> He's like in there with these young actors. Yeah. This is when we were young. No, dude, say the line. <laughs> We're I'm doing a, the one where we're young. I'm a teenager. Ringo, stop saying. <laughs> I'm warning. You're going to have to get the lines when I say them. Ringo. Please. Please. Um, this scene's about when we played Shea Stadium. Dude, I was thinking that the Ringo one would be like all psychedelic and fun and like wacky. Kinda. Yeah. That'd be like a Seth Rogen play. Yeah, zone. why not? That would be Have really fun, fun with it, guys. Who played him in that movie? In that walk tight? Oh, it was Justin Long. That's Justin funny. Long was Ringo. Yeah. I wrote a song about an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Jack Black was Paul. Yeah. And Paul Rudd was John. John. Yeah. And uh, Jason, uh, um, or fucking uh, Jason Schwartzman oh, yeah. was uh, George. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's do these ads, huh, Dude, brothers? Yeah, this ad. When does the show go up, Kev? The first. The first, got it. You want to do some? Uh, you want to do some promotions? Yeah, you want me to do it now? Yeah, do it now because I've got a few too, actually. <clears throat> uh, tonight I'm gonna be doing Dishoom at the Alamo Draft House, and uh, that's when me and um, my uh, comedian cohorts watch a Bollywood movie and talk about it. Last time I did it was fucking. We watched that. What's it called? R R R. Oh, that was a great movie. That's yeah, a great movie. and it was fucking awesome. Um, and then on the fifth, I'm in the Hollywood Improv Lab. On the eighth is the next surrounded. 
Me and a mystery lineup with some of the best goddamn comedians you ever see take over the lab at the world famous Hollywood Improv for Surrounded. One show at 9.45. That shit's going to sell out, so make sure you get tickets soon. On the 9th, I'm at the Lyric Hyperion for a show called Interrupted, where men get interrupted for once. Fuck yeah. men. Yeah. Men are gay, some of them. Um, on the 9th, Oh, Lyric Hyperion on the 21st. I'm doing cult comedy at the uh, Hollywood Improv Lab from the 22nd to the 26th, I believe, on that Moon Tower in Austin. On the 27th of April, I believe, I'm in um, uh, Connecticut doing a surrounded in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And on the 7th of May, that's the big surrounded. Um, as part of the Netflix is a joke festival at the Bourbon Room. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. That's so much. Loaded up. Thank you. I'm all loaded up and there's plenty more to come. I made the decision that I got to get out of this city for a while and there's a bunch of places I want to go on the road so I can't wait to be able to do that. Hell yeah, dude. That's tight. And Kevin's coming. Kevin, get on the road with that pizza. Get out of the city and get some fresh air, you Little pipsqueak. I'm going to leave Kevin in a city of your choice. Go to our Facebook page and vote for the city you want me to leave Kevin in. Where we leave Kevin. Uh, That's fun. Um, I think, so I'm all backwards about when this shit goes up, but I did do another Power Pints show. Nice. And I think it happened last that? weekend. Do you know but the But it's day? happening this weekend in our present. How'd you do? I think I did all right because I, the 25th, actually. Yeah, that's this Sunday. Which is when we're shooting some stuff, right? Guys, Squarespace is, uh... (laughs) Wait, no, I want to shout out DJ's Gunplay Movie. Gunplay movie. DJ's trying to make a movie. You know DJ from the old source fed days. Big tall, drink a glass. It's just full of glass. <laughs> Big Half tall full. glass. Big tall glass full of glass. Yeah. And uh, that man's making a movie, and there's some friends of ours that are in it as well as myself. And the nice. movie has not been made yet, but um, I do want to shout out gunplaymovie.com if you want to see that movie get made. Yeah. Hot and, fire. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, man. And you know, a friend of ours is making a movie. I think that's cool. Support uh, independent independent artists. Yeah is always a good thing and uh yeah you know check it out maybe throw a couple of coins his way or don't but check out gunplaymovie.com anyway and maybe you'll see some familiar faces three three five is buried underneath some rubble right now <laughs> Guys, let's talk about Squarespace really quick. One of our favorite sponsors here, MikeFileZone.com, is is a Squarespace website. For those of you wondering what Squarespace is, you can check that out, and you'll see. It's a website building service place, magical land. Yeah, you're right. Where you can make your own website and feature whatever you want on it. And you can have a shop, and you can have multimedia areas, and links, and all sorts of stuff. Do what most professional websites can do with Squarespace. And you can just check it out and see what's up. And as a matter of fact, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and try it out and see like, hey, what would a template version of my website look like and build it all up and take a look at it. And if you like it and you're like, damn, I want this on the internet, you can go to squarespace.com slash banter and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of that website or domain. It's that easy. Ain't that right, Mike? Right, Mike. Right. Yes. yes. And don't you love it? Son, I do sir. love it. I have to update it today. He's going to update it today, guys. And you can go there and check out all sorts of stuff. And Mike uses it. It's a business tool for Mike Falzone. And it doesn't have to be a business tool. You can have it be a thing that's like a party invite website. So you want a website and you want it to look good, go on this fucking website and check it out. It's real good. Bingo. Bingo. So go to squarespace.com to get that free trial. And when you're ready to launch the site and have it out on the internet so everyone can look at it in the world, go to squarespace.com slash banter 
to save 10% off your first purchase of that website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. <laughs> They just opened the door to Disneyland real quick. <laughs> what happened to Goofy in there? It's <laughs> getting choked out. Um. All right, where are we at, Kevin? We can do. I, there's a lot of history. There roads. is a lot of history roads. Can I say one thing real quick before we do this? The, really early this morning, it was kind of chilly, and I used my bidet, and it was so cold that I got like brain freeze in my ass. Whoa. You ever do that? You ever get backwards brain freeze? That's crazy. Wait, yeah. so it was like too hurt. cold. It was too cold, dude. And it, and honestly, and if you let it go, it like numbs you up. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. All right. Let's do some history road. Oh, and since we talked about the Beatles, want to do some books. Yeah, um, I'm going to, I think, Pennsylvania, where it's Allentown. Ooh, that's nice. Allentown. Yeah, dude, it's like this. Yeah, dude, it's like this uh, arena. I think it's some bank, Seabucks National Bank. <laughs> but it used to be the uh, Allentown Auditorium, so it should be pretty fun. There's oh, a lot shit. Of what? No way. The Allentown yeah, Auditorium? Man. That's the one that uh, the one that burned down and it killed that wrestler? <laughs> Oh my god, that is the same. I hate laughing about it. The place was engulfed in flames and they couldn't even use the water. The water was bad. They had bad water now. So that's too bad. It's just two guys talking. I am a toilet boy. So just a show. We just fucking talk to each other. That's it. That's all we do. We just, we just talk to each other. Nothing else. History. I'm 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 a toilet boy. It's plastic. All right, let's talk about it. Let's see what's up with Noah Marshall. Wait. This one. It's like a Sesame Street, like yeah. Just a voice from the sky. Yeah, yeah. And then you see, like, the number two, and then the hand's about to go, and you hear, wait! <laughs> and then it flips out, and then it goes number one. This one! <laughs> and then, as a kid, you know about two. And you're like, I know it wasn't two! <laughs> wait! This one! With an echo over it and everything. Yeah. I like I'm it. sorry that you suck. Motherfuck me with this bullshit. <laughs> but they're <right. clears throat> okay. okay. Hannah says Garrett <clears throat> describes DB. Is there? I, is this multimedia? Yeah. Yeah. And it says I say it's all in cracking those eggs. Excuse me. Dear BBB, please, dear God, help me. Dad <laughs> is my dad is dying. Call three 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 boys. It's a normal show. People just talk to each other. We just talk to each other. It's just two guys talking Pretty to each normal. other. Hello and happy 400th episode! Yeah! <laughs> Thank you for <so> much. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Uh, 
Um, <laughs> I can't believe y'all been saying things in my ear for so long. I think all of us <laughs> listeners can agree our eardrums have been so blessed. I'm so excited for more Patreon content, and I'm loving them lately. Your podcast has truly transcended beyond just a show I, I, I like and is an integral part of my weekly joy. Hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do. The attached video is my partner Garrett describing dynamic banter. I have tried to get him to listen more, but he has his own emotional support podcast right now, and I respect that. What is it? I want to know what it is. We have a names. rule that we don't listen to dynamic banter while driving because we like having limbs. <laughs> and I but I think he just doesn't like the noises. <laughs> No. Do you need a theme song for Be Nice or Not Be Nice? Yeah. Go back and be nice and not be nice and not to be nice and not to be nice and not to be Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, who cares? I like it and I appreciate you both. <laughs> 10 out of 10, keep it up. I will not be addressing Kevin. Kevin's sharpening a knife. Kiss and kiss and such. Hannah and Garrett. Here's Garrett describes DB. All right, here we go. <laughs> it will not be addressing Describe Kevin. Describe dynamic banter to us. This is Garrett. I thought it's just noise. I didn't realize that there were people in the podcast talking for a long time. I thought it was just some dudes just making noise. Because every time I ever hear, heard it, heard it, heard it, it was just chaotic, just banging or music yeah. for like, I just want a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> so you thought it was a podcast about, I didn't know. about noises? <laughs> Sharing noises? I'm not wrong. I thought it was just two dudes having a great time together. That's true. To do sharing noises. Uh, that's not your thing. Yeah, tell know. us why. I don't know why. Why not? Because I, I need to hear... I haven't heard him speak anything yet. <laughs> 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 I just won 250000 I just won 250000 It's an ad read. It's an ad read of just or... the most chaotic scale. I'm not joking. Days. Or... But what if I told you that those are the only fucking ads that I listen to ever? And several <laughs> other people have said that. Write that down. <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. Thank you for your thoughts. That's the show. Two ways. <laughs> Two ways. I love them. Beautiful. I love them. That was so helpful. Thank you so much. That's a cute couple. That's a cute couple. I like their interaction. It doesn't seem bickery. It seems no. like we're having no. fun together. They jive with each other. I that's like a good that. that's a good match. Yeah. When you have creative differences or 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 some sort of you don't share all the same interests, there's a world where someone gets all gatekeepy and weird and like, "Oh yeah, well then blah blah, I like this." <laughs> What the fuck was that? I don't know what that was. Was that a whale? <laughs> I do have one whale. It sounded like a kid picked up a microphone and went, Doo! <laughs> yeah. I want to cut to a kid coming in and just picking up the mic and going, Doo! and then walking away. <laughs> <sighs> That's great. That's very funny. Dude, what, a, what about a t-shirt that just says sharing noises, but it's in the dynamic banter font? That's fun. Sharing noises. <laughs> sharing noises since whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? 2000? Making sounds. 12? What's eight years ago? Let's call the mayor. What's, 20, what's 24 minus eight? Can we ask the mayor? 16. Dude, he's just on the phone answering questions like that all day. <laughs> That's everyone who works in the office. When he decides it's quitting time, they're just watching him answer all of his phones. You already shouted him out. You got it. Okay, Noah. Where's she? What you got, buddy? It's a history road about going down a history road. 
Hello, sir, Steve, and Mr. Mike. Hi. And we... And we... My name is Noer. I live directly outside of each of your individual homes on alternating nights. What? This is the one we had to read? <laughs> and I'd like you both to know that I'm currently in the process of watching 5,000 source-fed videos so I can make an eight-part podcast-style docu-series about it Whoa. with my best friend. Wow. Wow, that's fucking crazy, actually. Too that many. made our piano guy go nuts. That woke up our piano guy. You could say we're going down our little history road. No real plug for it or anything. I just don't know anyone who would give a horn honk shit about it, so I thought I'd tell you guys instead. <laughs> that goes for both of us. P.S. Steve, were you really as excited for Assassin's Creed 3 as you were in your first source-fed appearance, or did they make you act like that? <laughs> um, that doesn't seem like you're kind of I didn't game. love the Assassin's Creed games, but I did play one or two and was like, yeah, man, this is actually pretty cool. Tight. I think there was a time that I liked it, yeah. I liked watching people play that. I remember one time I fell through a glass door and I watched my roommate play that for like three days while I, I couldn't just, move on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Like, that's probably the best way to watch that, yeah. to play that game. But I liked sneaking around through the crowds. Yeah. And you could kind of like, you know, you got your hood up and stuff and then you're like, you just have this guy next to you and then you like walk away and no one knew you killed that guy. And then you jump off a church. Yeah. Then you jump hay. off a church into the bag of hay. <laughs> into a bag of hay. You jump off the bag of hay. P.S.S. I sent you guys a history road like a year and a half ago, and while reading it, Steve said that if there was one person he wished left a phone number, it should have been me. 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 I kind of maybe forgot you guys existed for a little bit after SourceFed ended and discovered DB in like 2022. 22. 22. Which Steve thought was interesting. I do think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I do. I did not leave my number, and I have never forgiven myself for that. Here's the clip. Mm. People like this, but but jumping into DB last week mm -hmm. from dropping off from us from SourceFed. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. It's and also nice because you don't need to know anything before any dynamic banter episode really. yeah yeah exactly yeah dude this is the one email i want a phone number in and there isn't one <laughs> yeah. you didn't know that we do that because you stop because yeah like you you source fed ended and then you didn't look into anybody's lives yeah but then in 2022 you like started listening to dynamic banter i guess that it like back then that did sound like probably an interesting opportunity for a conversation. A conversation. But at this point, it's like. It's like you kind of already know. I, I know. Yeah. You could ask him, like, be like, did you really not care about us at all after right. we lost our jobs? And then he'd be like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and that's the whole conversation. But the important part is finding us now. Mm hmm. Because, you know, hopefully they stick around for the ride. It, it does feel like there's like some source fed coded dna buried deep in the dynamic banter tree sure uh so you know i think that if you were a source fed fan back in the day you probably would enjoy this show always to interesting to think about what tips your brain off to want to um rediscover something i guess that's what it is it's like what did make you rediscover it and it could be something as simple as like the algorithm fed me a clip or mm -hmm. i was looking on youtube and i saw you or i saw mike or something and yeah you know i feel like the reason is probably a little more like not interesting than i probably than it I probably figured it was interesting at the time. Yeah, and but now, now you're not interested. Well, now I think about all the re possibilities. Like, oh, maybe he was upset about something, or maybe this or that, or they stopped watching YouTube or stopped listening to podcasts, and then one day was like, oh, I'm going to be on a road trip for four hours. Let me see what these podcasts have yeah. to offer. Like, and then didn't they die? Wasn't that the? And then they they had to go back through the internet to be like, no, nah, they didn't die. Let me check the Wikipedia. I thought I heard that. Didn't Mike die? <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn I saw that on TMZ that Mike died. <laughs> um, Kevin, any any other yeah, particular? Uh, Cody, 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 Lucian. Cody says 
My son's name is BB Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to be the first to say. <laughs> uh, hello, gentlemen. Here's a classic history road about how the vocabulary of your podcast has now sunken into my everyday existence. Uh, I'm the father of a uh, father of a one year old and also the father of an eight year old. Oh fuck! My eight year old had a friend over a few weeks ago, and that friend took a real liking to my young boy. As he is now the drunken old guy, he's in the drunken old guy stage of being a toddler. Oh, that's, that's fun. fun. Waddling around, falling down, and babbling like a fool. <laughs> You know the stage. Put your baby up to the radio real quick. Well, um, let me talk to your baby real okay, quick. Okay, go ahead. Let me talk to everyone's. But if you have a, if you listen to this show and you have a baby, let me have a, talk to your babies real quick. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they get that? <laughs> that was just for the babies in the crowd. My older son's friend was babbling back and forth with my toddler when he excla- ex- exclaimed, Did he just say BB Bobby? I'm going to start calling him BB Bobby. <laughs> the other kid? I'm going to start calling him BB Bobby, an idea that my older son was enamored with, also calling his younger brother BB Bobby, and not stopping ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, BB Bobby, yeah, baby. <laughs> now I'm certain this eight year old has a zero minute listening time on DB. And my son's only experience to the pod is me yelling, I'm warning you at him in Ringo's accent. That's so this good. kid's just a poser. He doesn't even listen. Yeah. He can't even name two albums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm warning you with peace and love, but I have too much to do. So here I am, a lone DB enthusiast who now serendipitously has a son named BB Bobby. That's very funny. So obviously, thank you for the laughs. I've been a fan of you both since Mike was singing Rebecca Black on his couch. You remember that? And it fills me with joy to laugh at your bits as they now start to take over my life. I don't give a fuck. Uh, that's <laughs> jackpot. Obviously, thank you for the laughs. I've been a fan of you both since Mike was singing Rebecca Black on his couch. You remember? Be safe and never stop being <laughs> dynamic. Cody Evolution. Dude, speaking of being dynamic, I want to uh, say a special shout out to anyone who's posted pictures in their new um, uh, banter hoodies. Yeah. Um, they look real, real good. Fucking Byron printed them up nice for the eighth anniversary. They say eight on the back and they have, uh, in like blow up foamy letters. It says banter on the front. They look real sharp and real cool. As Hell fuck. yeah, dude. I can't wait until mine comes in. And also you see Steve is wearing the dynamic banter hat. Both are available on dynamic banter dot clothing. And you could smell it. And it, if you scratch it, it smells like us. Motherfuck. Let's do one more and then we can do the game. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Bobby. <laughs> Kevin sounds like a velociraptor. My weird dad, Danielle Zays. Hello, boys. Well, listening to the episode where you were emphasizing appreciation for your dads, I got to thinking about how I think the most endearing thing about my father is just is how just off the wall the man truly is. (laughs) 
To paint the mental picture, he has a gray beard and a stash and sort of looks like the white man version of the full body shot of Kermit the Frog standing up while wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's some fa- fun facts. My dad owns exactly four long sleeve shirts and four pairs of jeans. Keep it simple. He only wears those. He slept in said jeans and shirt up until 2022 when my mother finally convinced him to try pajamas. You don't sleep in your outside clothes. Definitely not. That's gross. There's got to be a difference. Don't take everything from the outside. You go into like public <laughs> bathrooms in those pants. And then like. Go lay down in your bed. And, and your wife's up. like snooches out. Maybe. And you curl up with her and you wrap your legs around her and your pants that were in the bathroom at Denny's. The bottom of your pants that tuck under the Ugh, bottom of your shoes. That drag in the rainy street. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is not sure. You cannot call my dad back at any time. Any time. Because after he calls you, he turns his phone off and no, you cannot text him because he doesn't believe in texting. He's one of those guys. Or washing machine. He will randomly wander away from you at a store and then just reappear somewhere. Where? No telling how long he'll be gone for, though. He Sounds once, like an interesting guy. <laughs> he once told me a detailed history of the drugs he had done in the past and then said, yeah, so don't do any of those. <laughs> As a way to deter me from asking any kind of substance use. From any kind of substance use. Did it work? That's a good question. you think that worked? He speaks mostly in one-liners and by referencing obscure movies and songs no one has ever heard. This guy sounds like a friend of ours. I know like a lot of people like your dad. Uh, he will have random ice cream kicks where every day he buys a new container of ice cream and eats the entire thing. Fuck yeah. He's at the zero fucks point in yeah. his life. It sounds like he's been there. Uh, he only drinks coffee, no other liquid, just <laughs> coffee. Wow. Have your dad, uh, maybe give him a renal scan. And every childhood memory he tells me about is riddled with either someone doing something illegal or he and his brothers doing something and then narrowly escaping death. Thank you for reading. Should you want to know more about my father, feel free to call me. I'm sure there's other weird stuff he does. I just can't think of it. Best regards. Daniel. Sounds like a fun guy. Does sound like a fun guy. I would like updates on this dad. Yeah. Like give us some more. Give us give us some more info. Does he like the show? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I want to know the dad's reaction to the show. I don't need to know anything else about yeah, the dad. Play I feel your, like I got him. That's a good idea. Play your dad like the weirdest episode of the yeah, show. Yeah. And give us a. Because he's either going to be all in or all out hard. All right. Where's this game at? Yay. Give me my gay. Yay. Let's play the gay. Let's play the gay and get out of here. We end every where did, podcast where did, by playing gay. Where did you go? Where did you go? There it is. My love. We need a theme song for Be Nice or Not Be Nice. Is there one of these? Yeah. A good old fashioned oh, Be no. Nice or Not It's the other one. Good old or not be nice or not. <laughs> I want to remind everyone that uh, the next Surrounded at the World Famous Hollywood Improv Lab is the 8th, which is the second Friday of the month. And then we're doing Surrounded as part of the Netflix is the Joke Festival on May 7th at the Bourbon Room. Tickets for both of those available now. MikeFeldsOn.com. Do we have one member of the band that just hits stuff around him? <laughs> That'd be a fun band member job. You like you just be on the beat, be but in hit whatever you want. Yeah, we got a mic. Can I get more room in my monitors? All right. So last week we've got our brand new uh, DB game where we guess the title of a DB episode. It could be fake. It could be real. I say we remove all these stakes, obviously. I think that the, those didn't go over very well. No. Uh, uh, what's it called? The killing Mortimer Mortimer's thing. Mortimer's out. That's out. I, we, don't, we don't love that. We no, don't want to Mort- put Mortimer I'm saying Mortimer's danger. out. I want to play long. I yeah. want to be fucking... I want to be a team player. Yeah. We were given an objective. Mortimer's dead. That's Oh, Mortimer died. No. If we get three wrong, he's dead. Yeah. 
And that's it. That's the end of Mortimer? That's it. Man. Can we eat him at least? I don't, you know, Nick kind of already killed him. Do you remember that? Look what you did. You cut I don't a hole feel in like I've face. done enough. You cut a hole in Mortimer's face. I don't remember it's nothing. It's well documented. I don't remember nothing. Motherfuck me with this bullshit. What? Motherfuck me with this bullshit. Motherfuck me with this bullshit. Kevin needs a second, for fuck's sake. We're doing Surrounded on the 8th, which is the second Friday of the month in the Hollywood Improv Lab. 9.45, one show. And then they're doing another show. Do you come to the other one or this one? Do you want to come to the other show? Do you want to come to this show? 818 <laughs> Don't come to show the improv. Eight one eight seven two two eight six eight two. Take down the come to the improv. That was a HeadGum Podcast.